Electing the President 2012 is a discussion of the American presidential election and how you can personally take part in electing the next President of the United States. The presidential election is the biggest event in American politics. The winner sets the direction for the country for many years. Voting in this election is one of the most important responsibilities of every eligible American citizen. It's easy to be overwhelmed by all the election activities. This presentation produced by the League of Women Voters and Newspapers in Education Institute uncomplicates the process so all can take part. The most important players in the election of the United States President are the American voters, not the candidate, not the political party, not the pollsters, not the press. Come election day, only the voters' opinion matter and no one else has control over the outcome. Voting is the great equalizer in American society. You have one vote and with that one vote you have the power to influence decisions that will affect your life, your job, your taxes, your health care, your social security. Whether the nation goes to war, you name it, they are all at stake. Even though the Constitution told states that they couldn't deny certain groups the right to vote, that didn't stop some states from erecting barriers aimed at trying to prevent some citizens from registering and voting. These attempts brought about the constitutional amendments to clarify who we the people are. Today, every American citizen aged 18 and older has the right to vote. It's easy, it's easy to forget how much blood, sweat, and tears has gone into making sure all segments of the American population, minority, women, and youth, are able to have their say. This was not always true. Originally, only white males could vote. Many state governments limited this even more to those who owned property. After the American Civil War, the 15th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. Its purpose was to ensure that former slaves and their descendants, and indeed citizens of all races and colors, could vote. Still, only men could vote until 1920, when, after a long struggle, the 19th Amendment finally gave women the right to vote. Some states tried to limit the number of poor people who could vote by requiring voters to pay a poll tax. This was much more difficult for the poor to pay than for those with more money. The 24th Amendment, ratified in 1964, made it unconstitutional to require a poll tax in elections for national offices. Many people thought it wasn't fair that 18-year-olds could serve in the military and give their lives for their country, but couldn't vote until they were 21 years old. This was one of the reasons why, in 1971, the 26th Amendment gave all citizens the right to vote, starting at age 18. Recently, some states have found a new way to suppress the vote and have passed laws requiring, requiring photo identification at the polls. This poses a barrier for many voters, especially the poor and elderly, who may not have a driver's license. With more people eligible to vote and voter registration rates on the rise, you would think that the percentage of Americans showing up at the polls would be higher than ever. But that's not the case. The chart on this slide shows that voting has been declining. We each have the ability to increase voter turnout. Register to vote and help others register too. Talk to people about the candidates and the issues and why you feel it's important to vote. Find out if your family, friends, and neighbors have what they need to make informed decisions and to get to the polls. Maybe all they need is a ride. Don't go to the polling place alone. Make a date to take a neighbor. Unless you understand which candidates and issues are important to you and go to the polls to vote, someone else will make the important decisions affecting your life. When we enter the voting booth, 
There is more than just residency in the Oval Office on the line. It's about you. This election will impact you in, and the people in your life. It's about your job, your health, your community, your future. This is your chance to stand up for what you believe in and make sure your family and friends do too. We have grouped the remaining slides into several categories. The steps you take to get a ballot, how to get useful information about each candidate, how to listen to our de debates so you can compare candidates making your decision, and what to do on election day. What steps must I take to vote in the November 6th presidential election? At least 30 days before the election date, you must register with the Board of Elections, unless you are already registered. You can download an online form provided by the Board of Elections or request one at any public library. Once you fill it out, mail it to the address on the form. You will receive, at your home address, a postcard telling you where your polling place is located. If you have moved since you last registered, you need to re-register in order to vote. You have three choices for voting. You can go to your polling place on November the 6th and vote in person. You can vote in person at one of the early voting locations on designated day or you can request an absentee ballot and vote by mail prior to November the 6th. Which is more convenient for you? Does your work schedule and transportation permit you to go to the polls? If not, an absentee ballot is what you want. All registered voters in Ohio will receive an application for absentee ballot in the mail either early September or early October depending on when they are officially on the rolls. Fill this out and send it to the address provided if you want to vote by mail. Once you receive your absentee ballot fill it out carefully and put it into the special sealed envelope included. Be sure to follow all of the instructions and to provide all of the identifying information requested. Put sufficient postage on the outer envelope and mail it by the stated deadline. If you decide to vote in person, you must go to the right polling place on election day and you must be able to show the required identification of who you are and where you live. If you forget your polling location, call the Board of Elections or visit smartvoter.org. Acceptable identification includes a valid Ohio driver's license or other valid photo ID issued by the state of Ohio, the military, or the U.S. government. It also includes a current utility bill, bank statement, government check, or paycheck from within the past 12 months. All photo IDs or other identifying documents must contain your current address with the exception of your Ohio driver's license. If your Ohio driver's license address is out of date, you must provide other documentation of your current address. It's unlikely that you will have a problem voting if you go to the proper polling place and remember to bring along the required identification. If you do, get help from your poll workers. They should direct you to the proper polling place or have you vote a provisional ballot. Don't leave without voting. We've talked about how to register and how to cast your ballot, but we haven't talked yet about making your decision of who to vote for. What problems do you want addressed in the next four years? What is each candidate saying he or she will do? You'll want to research the candidates to see if you agree with their solutions to problems. Use the League's Voter Guide, Vote 411, Debates, and Town Meetings to learn about the candidates. When listening to media ads, make sure you know who is paying for the ad. The source of each ad will help you decide if the ad is something you want to believe or not. If you have a computer available, go to smartvoter.org. By entering your address, it will show you a copy of the exact ballot you will have on election day. You will see exactly who is running for each office you can vote on. You can ignore candidates for office that are outside your city or town. At smartvoter.org, you will get a customized ballot, candidate information, the ability to compare candidates' answers side by side, 
pros and cons of any ballot issues, links to candidate websites, campaign finance reports, media coverage, and more. Candidates will be sending out their own information. Political action committees, known as PACs, will be placing ads for and against candidates. Robocalls will try to convince you to vote a certain way. Not all of this information may be entirely truthful. Compare these ads with what candidates actually say about issues themselves before you make up your mind. Every day on the media, you will hear polls about who is winning the election. This makes good news copy, but is not useful for you in deciding your vote. Your personal research is more important. Don't let the opinions of people you don't know influence you. A debate is an event at which the candidates meet face to face to answer questions that are asked of them. This gives the candidates a chance to state their views and to respond to their opponent's statements. It gives viewers a chance to directly compare the candidates and their positions. You'll get more out of a debate if you do some advanced preparation. Follow the campaign to learn about the candidate and their backgrounds. Find out what the important campaign issues are. Decide what issues are important to you. Think about the questions you may have and the information you want to get from the debate to help you in your decision making. Open your mind to new opinions and impressions of the candidates regardless of party affiliation. When watching the debate, ask yourself questions like these to help you judge the performance of the candidates. Do they answer questions directly, or do they evade them or fail to answer the specific questions? Do they give specifics about their stands on the issues, or do they speak in generalities? Do they support their positions and arguments with facts and figures? Do they talk about their own policies and positions, or do they mostly attack their opponents? Are their proposals realistic? Can they actually carry out the promises they are making? Do they appear sincere, confident, and relaxed? Do they show how their backgrounds and experience qualify them to hold office? Are their answers consistent with their previous positions, and if not, do they explain why? What image are they trying to create? Do their responses appear overly rehearsed or canned? It will help clarify your thoughts about the candidates and issues if you take some time after the debate to reflect on what you have just seen and heard. Turn off the TV and avoid listening to the commentaries. Compare your impressions with others who watched the debate. Ask yourself, based on the information you got from watching the debate, which candidate appears most qualified for the office. Identify the issues on which you agree with a candidate and those on which you disagree, and decide whether that makes you more or less likely to vote for a particular candidate. Ask yourself if you learned something new about the issues or the candidate. Think about whether you have more questions about the issues or the candidates that you want to follow up on. Get additional information about the candidates' positions from news reports, candidate websites, and nonpartisan voter information websites, such as vote411.org. Watch later debates for more information or to confirm your current impressions of the candidates. A poll gave these as the most important problems facing the U.S. today. Do you agree with the polls, or are other things more important to you? Are the candidates addressing your concerns, or are they talking about other things? Compare your views and solutions to problems with the views of each candidate as you decide whom to vote for. Radio and TV ads, calls, flyers, and media personalities will be trying to influence you to vote for their candidate. Sort through the maze and see which candidate aligns most closely to your way of thinking. These are the ones most likely to help you gain your personal goals. Don't let others influence you 
into voting for your physical characteristics, a particular party, or issue unimportant to you. This is your vote. On the Tuesday in November that falls between November 2nd and November 8th, control of the presidential election finally passes into the hands of the American voter where it belongs. Join with others in your community in helping to make this decision. It comes down to this. The voters decision about which of the candidates they feel is most qualified to lead the nation. Before going to the polls, write down your decisions. It will make you feel more confident when you see all the names and issues on the ballot. Just walk past the people trying to influence you since you already know what you will do. Feel great about yourself and wear your I Voted Today sticker proudly. If they cannot find your name in the records, get help from a poll worker to make sure your vote is counted. You should be directed to another polling place or given a provisional ballot. Let's cover the important steps briefly. Vote and encourage others to vote. And if it's hard to get to the polls on election day, remember that absentee ballots are generally available. Find out about the candidates and their positions. Read the papers, check the websites, visit smartvoter.org. Decide what you're looking for in a candidate. Evaluate the candidate's stands on the issues important to you. Learn about the candidate's leadership abilities and integrity. Talk about the candidates and issues with friends, relatives, and coworkers, whether that means emailing, instant messaging, blogging, or even face-to-face -face conversations. Make sure you have the correct ID required in your state. Many states have been changing the laws on this. Make sure you know where to vote. The vast majority of calls received on Election Day hotlines are from voters asking about their polling place. The League of Women Voters site, www.smartvoter.org, provides this information. So does your local Board of Election. Tweet any problems you are seeing to hashtag voting problems. Do not leave the polling place without voting. Here are some nonpartisan websites that will help you learn about the candidates. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation on Electing the President 2012. Thanks to the League of Women Voters of the United States and Newspapers and Education Institute for the initial materials. This presentation was created by the League of Women Voters of the Cincinnati area. Artwork by Megan Volkerdink. For more information, visit lwvca.org. And remember to vote November 6th.